so just to to jump straight into into the questions um i don't know if you'd maybe mind just starting with a quick um overview of your your results um your operations and financials and then just let me know if there's you know anything that stood out for either of you during the period sure simone so i'll kick off um we had a, a strong trading period um you know on the back of a number of uh, factors um, including investments made in past years, which are starting to pay off nicely. Our revenue grew 16% to 5.9 billion rand, which was very pleasing. Um, our underlying earnings per share up 13 times to 121 cents, and our, under, our underlying operating profit was up 165% to 337 million rand. Um, our business is in a very strong position financially with gearing down at around 28% and net debt to 1.47 billion, you know, from 1.9 billion this time last year. Um, and that, despite us paying out uh, 345 million rand to shareholders in the last nine months through a very successful share buyback. And just to give you an example, you know, COVID, uh, while it did a, a lot of negative, it also depressed uh, share prices across the market. Um, and many companies, when that happens, are not in a position to buy back their shares because uh, of the liquidity. But we are in the very fortunate position uh, to be able to, to, to have been able to buy back our shares at about 13 rand 70. Um, where the NAV is around 24 rand. So that's an excellent uplift for, for shareholders uh, going forward, which is very encouraging. Um, and then, of course, we've uh, recently approved over 500 million rand of, of new investments, uh, customer-focused growth, innovation, and sustainability investments that include uh, new factories, uh, new recycling facilities, and uh, quite a strong commitment to extending our solar PV installations from the current four megawatts to, to 10 and a half megawatts with opportunities still to go beyond that in the future. So all in all, I'd say a, a very strong performance that we're very pleased by, um, strong financial position, which uh, puts us in a good uh, place uh, to take advantage of opportunities that may come, especially in these times when there's a lot of turmoil. Um, so all in all, we're very pleased with the result. Great, thank you. And well done on the fantastic results. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so the company's strong financial position and proven strategy enables it to take advantage of significant changes in the economy as it begins to recover. Could you talk to me on what some of these, these changes are and how exactly impact is position to take advantage of these? Sure. So we've seen uh, since uh, the COVID uh, sort of start, since COVID started that a number of, uh, especially multinationals, for example, are looking to mitigate risk of imports and uh, and supply chain interruptions, you know, because COVID highlighted that uh, based on your, your procurement practices, you could be putting your business at significant risk. So we're seeing them requesting more and more local supply, which certainly supports our business because we're a local manufacturer, um, and also local supply of sustainable products. So we are the biggest recycler in South Africa. Our business isn't just about a hope of closing the loop in terms of paper and packaging, recycling and reuse. It is our business, you know, that is the forefront of our business. And through our innovative products, we are able to offer our customers things that weren't available two years ago. One good example is, uh, for example, our paper punnets, you know, which weren't even in the market two or three years ago and now are gaining great traction for, for fruits such as grapes, berries, strawberries, mushrooms, all those kinds of things. If you walk into the retailers now, you'll even find our pot, our pot which is made out of paper, which is used for, for herbs that are sold by some of the retailers. Uh, gaining traction. So all of those things together are built on a, a platform of, of an in, innovative culture, I think are, are, are there to leverage these changes that we spoke about. Fantastic. Uh, the circular economy is a bit of a, a buzzword um, lately. You know, have you sort of seen a, a general uptick when it comes to, to recycling um, and its involvement in the circular economy, or is that sort of still building momentum? So, well, surprising, you might be surprised to know that South Africa has been a, a, quite a good recycler for 50 years of paper. So our business has been in the recycling of paper for 50 years. Um, I did personally my first project in paper recycling in 1994, where I was sent off to a, a local school to go and uh, present Ronnie Recycler at that time. We had a suit and what have you. So that's long ago. I mean, that was before it was a fad, you know, because it was our business. And what we've seen recently is uh, people more committed to that. But it has to be said that the social media or the media generally, but social media particularly, elevates it to a point where you would think that the whole world is thinking like that. But our experience is probably only 10 or 15% of people actually think seriously about recycling. The rest are sort of just uh, complying with the systems. So that's 
that 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 leaves the burden and the responsibility on producers, which is now being uh, enacted in South Africa. That's a law to actually motivate and get people to recycle uh, through systems which are easily accessible. And I think we are at the forefront of providing those systems. And so on balance, I'd say there is great traction. Um, and uh, with that being in our front yard, you know, you know, often recycling is in the backyard of people. In our business, in our front yard, um, I think it positions us very well. I noticed your plastic business was somewhat affected by the recent uh, civil unrest seen in KZN and parts of Gauteng. Um, could you talk to me uh, or talk me through this and sort of just touch on how Impact managed to recover from any adverse effects? Yeah, so it wasn't only our plastic business. In fact, we've got uh, six or seven operations in KZN, um, you know, quite substantial in size. And all of them were closed for eight days, or up to eight days over the period. Fortunately, none. there was no damage to any of our property and there was no, no injuries to our employees. But our, our employees and our staff in those operations did a remarkable job, you know, and showed great resilience in, first of all, making sure that our staff were protected and the contractors that work with us, but also our property. So we've had no damage in that respect. And we have seen uh, quite a taper off in terms of customer demand um, as a consequence of that. Some of that might recover in the months ahead. I'd say on balance about 10% of our, of our of, of, of customers' uh, volumes were taken out in KZN, you know, 10% of the national volume. And some of it will recover quite quickly and perhaps some will take longer to recover. So, but our operations are all fully, operation, are fully functional again. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's it for my specific questions. I don't know if there's anything either of you would like to add or maybe highlight for us. We've got a strong balance sheet, as Bruce said, and, we, and uh, we've done well in managing our working capital, which has generated a lot of cash for us. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. And that will help us invest in more projects going forward.